you know who it is. It's your boy Maki T here back for another video and today we're going to be looking at how to do this really spooky creature effect even though Halloween's over we're gonna try and still create something special. Now for this effect we're gonna be using Cinema 4D, After Effects and Octane um, but I'm also gonna show you guys a method to get away with just using After Effects although it's not as complicated and as maybe as good looking I'll still teach you how to get away with it. Now there's two ways we can go about creating a creature and this relates to the two methods that I'm about to describe. First method is we can model a 3D scene with a 3D model as the creature which is a bit more complex and the second way of doing it is just using a shape layer and trying to that kind of puppeteer an image in After Effects um, instead of doing any 3D work in After Effects or whatever. We're just going to do a 2D puppeteering and hopefully make it look scary. Trust me, 2D puppeteering is scary. It's scary. First technique is going to be in Cinema 4D, so that's the first thing we need to open up and make sure you have Octane. If you don't know about Octane, check the description, I'll give some links. First we have to decide on our shot, you can go out and shoot some stuff or in my case I just found some stock footage um, that I'm going to use for this effect. You also will need a 3D model, um, you can model one yourself which is a bit time consuming if you're like me, so I just decided to go on a Turbo Squid and found, find a free uh, 3D model that looked alright and was rigged. But those are the two things that you kind of need. It needs to look alright, it needs to be rigged, and it needs to be free. You can even have a look at Adobe Maximo, they have some really simple animations um, and you can just play around with that, whatever, whatever you like I guess. Now you can open up Cinema 4D if you haven't already done that. Um, and I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to try and have to build tension without actually showing too much since we can't get away with a lot. Um, and it's often the stuff that you don't see that makes like a scene scary or makes something, you know, scary. If you think of any horror movie, it's that idea of something else being out there and, you know, the unseen, which is the scary thing. I'm just trying to justify me being lazy, but whatever. After Cinema 4D is open, we can start importing our models for texturing. Now I'd recommend that you guys go check out Polygon. It's my go-to website. If you have, if you know this channel, you know that I love Polygon. Um, it's about twelve dollars a month for a hobby license. I'd recommend you guys go check that out. Um, if not, you can always find some really good free textures online. Um, so go check out, you know, whatever whatever floats your boat. I think. As I mentioned before, I'm using Octane, and if you want to learn more about node-based materials and stuff like that, I check out. Some of the videos that I put in the description, they go into a lot of detail, um, especially if you're a beginner going into this stuff. The texture I used was a simple rock texture of Polygon, um, and I just, you know, played around with that. I think I made it a mixed material, so I used a couple rock textures, um, and then I just went in and I kind of color corrected the diffuse layer um, and tried to make it a bit more darker and a bit more of a subtle look. If you haven't found any textures, like you can just get away with using Octane, like a black Octane glossy material um, but you know I think this kind of looks a bit nicer so whatever you want to do go check out polygon and yeah now it may not look fancy right now but what's really going to help us is lighting and trying to match the mood that we're going for um, again we're going back to that thing of don't you know show don't tell we're going to try and uh, you know get away with a lot <laughs> now if you've got a moving shot like I do you're going to have to motion track so let's get into that to do this, we want to open up Motion Tracker and select our footage. From there, we can input our camera information. Um, and if you don't know your camera information, just put known but constant and I guess just leave the sensor size or kind of guess it. Um, again, this is DIY, we're kind of making it up as we go. <laughs> After we have input our information, we can click Run 3D Solver and that will create some 3D tracking points and a camera. Next, right click on your new motion track and select Planar Constraint. From there, we can select a couple points along a floor or a wall. In this case, I selected the Y axis as I was linking it to points on the floor. And basically what this does is it just creates a plane um, and it levels everything out along those three, three points that you've just selected. So that kind of gives us a floor to put something on. From there, we can plop in our 3D character into our new 3D scene and we can place the character in 3D space in a 3D environment, 3D, 3D, 3D. Place it wherever you want until it looks good. 
Now the next step for us is to light our character in Octane. Um, there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. I am going to be using a HDRI. You can even use just an Octane light, which I've actually done before for this effect right here. But a HDRI is basically a 360 image. Um, and it gives a lot more detail and the reflections of the gloss and stuff like that. So basically we're just trying to match our HDRI to the actual footage that we're placing our character in. There's some really good free HDRIs like the one I'm using now from HDRI Haven. Um, I really like their website, they have some really great free content. So make sure you go over there, check it out and download some free HDRIs. Now I selected this cloudy HDRI because I wanted it to match our footage but you have to try and find what's appropriate for your scene. For example, you may want to try a um, just an octane light, which I've done for this effect right here, because it was all very foggy and I was going to turn down the opacity and stuff like that. So you have to kind of just match it to what you're going for, um, and then we'll fine tune it later on in After Effects. Now the last step is to render out our footage. Um, I'm going to link some videos in the description that go into octane rendering and all the render passes and all the settings and what they mean. Um, but honestly, I'm literally just gonna be using a diffuse layer. I'm just gonna render out a normal diffuse layer and I'll just modify that because I'm lazy and we're doing this really fast. Now, the second method of creating this effect is purely done in After Effects. What we're basically doing is we are swapping out that 3D model for a 2D puppet um, and we're trying to make it kind of work. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's probably not gonna look as good, but if it's a subtle effect, you can probably make it work. If you're following along with the Octane and Cinema 40 part, uh, skip to the timestamp below and that's when we'll continue off from. Next we can open up After Effects and we can start creating our monster or our creature in there. Um, the best way to do this, there's two methods, you could go online and google creature.com.au or just find a random creature or an image of a creature um, and you can just puppeteer that or you could draw a spline and <laughs> I try and try and draw out a creature. Um, but I think the first method works a lot better as there's a bit of a gradient and that'll help kind of sell the effect. After we've done that, we can now pre-comp that layer once we have it all in there um, so we can adjust it later on if we need to. Click on the puppeteer tool. I think that's what it's called. Um, from there, we can start kind of creating a bit of a skeleton around our creature. Again, you want to try and make sure that there's enough points, but not too many, because it can get a bit distracting. From there, we can go down into the effects tab and start keyframing our puppeteering tool. Um, we just want to kind of create a bit of a subtle movement, not too distracting, otherwise it'll just not work at all. But we want a subtle, yeah, a subtle look that will help blend in with whatever background or whatever we're going to put it on. Now, if your footage has a bit of movement, we can either motion track, which I will link a video in the description on how to motion track. It's very simple in After Effects. Um, from there, we can just kind of rotate our plane and just place it, or uh, place our monster in the background somewhere. Um, or you can even just, you know, have a static shot if that's what you're after and just have your character like pop in or something like that. Um, again, it's up to you. I'm leaving it very open-ended, whatever you want to do. Now we can jump back into After Effects. If you're following along with the Cinema 4D method, uh, we're gonna have to start importing our stuff. So we're gonna have to import our new rendered layer and our base footage. Make sure when you import your footage that you reset or you set your frame rate correctly. Oftentimes this can mess, mess your renders up and off, you know, make it so it's not timed right. And uh, it's just a nightmare. So make sure you do that. Now once we have our creature in our location tracked, you know, animated, ready to go, we can start color correcting and making it all look nice and trying to match it in. In order to do this, we're going to use a couple effects. I'm using a level, lumetri color, um, and just some color balance stuff. Um, for the levels, we want to pretty much try and match the shadows, the mids and the blacks to the, you know, the base footage before we put on a color correction. So we kind of just want to match the dark areas so that they're kind of the same gradient, match the mids, match the, the highlights of our footage. Um, and that should help bring it all together. Now in Lumetri Color or your curves, we can actually adjust the reds, the greens and the blues. And what we want to do is we kind of want to look at our footage, see what the colors are in our like lows and in our high points. And we want to kind of match that. So for example, we may want to put a bit more greens or a bit more reds in the, in the shadows. And we want to put a bit more blues or whatever the colors are in the highlights. Um, and we just kind of want to keep adjusting it until it kind of looks all right. Um, but I think when we put the color grade on, it should blend a lot of things together. 
Also, don't forget to add a motion below if you didn't do that in Octane. Um, a really simple way is just using uh, a simple blur in After Effects and keyframing it from there. Now, after we have kind of matched our footage and matched our creature, um, we can start color grading. For this, I'm just going to use a light with a adjustment layer, um, and I'm just going to turn down the intensity and kind of play around the colors until I find something that I really like. And then I'm also going to put on a bit of grain um, and just an S curve as well to kind of crank down those blacks a little bit, make everything blend together a bit nicer. But the grain will also really help. So yeah, have a play around with it, find what you like, and yeah, now you have a creature that you can hopefully scare some people with, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Thanks so much guys for making it to the end of this video. I know I say this all the time, but thanks so much for just paying attention to the content. And hopefully you guys liked it and you learned something. If you did, feel free to subscribe or don't, up to you, whatever you want to do, but just make sure that you're learning, make sure that you're creating, and make sure that you're just having fun, have making films or just making whatever. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. And hopefully it should be good. Peace.